Hello, traders. Gary Wagner here. Approximately 1219 in Honolulu, 519 in New York on Thursday, 13th day of January 2022. And this is uh, the daily report for gold and silver. We had multiple asset classes trading lower today, but it was definitely the U.S. equities markets that got hit the hardest. The hardest hit amongst those sectors was the NASDAQ composite, losing about 2.5%. The S&P 500 sustained a drawdown today of 1.42%, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average gave up just shy of a half a percent, currently fixed at 36,113 points. Of the four precious metals that trade on the futures exchange, gold had the smallest percentage decline, declining by 0.28% or a loss of $5.20, with the most active February contract currently fixed at $1,800. $22.10. Silver declined by 0.37% or a loss of $0.09 cents per ounce with the March contract currently fixed at $23.12. Because of its high use in industry, it was palladium and palladium futures that had the largest percentage decline losing 1.37% or $26.30 with an ounce of palladium currently fixed at $1,889.50. Although all of the precious metals as well as U.S. equities came under pressure today, they did so in reaction to wholesale prices, the producer price index coming in and showing an increase of 0.2%. Now, while that might be the lowest increase in the last 13 months, it's still an increase of wholesale prices at a time in which inflation's at a 40-year high, 7%. And the fact that companies and U.S. equities are reacting to the end of free money even if the Federal Reserve raises interest rates a full percentage point, meaning four rate hikes, that's not going to significantly reduce inflationary pressures that are currently at 7%. The real problem behind our inflationary pressures is A, high demand, but more importantly, not enough workers in the factories to make the goods that Americans want, nor deliver the goods via truck, or get the cargo ships unloaded and the trucks moving cross-country. Until they shore up the work shortage, they're not going to have a tremendous impact on inflationary pressures. So while I can see U.S. equities taking a nosedive over this next year or even just coming under pressure, I don't see the same thing happening to the inflationary hedge metals like gold and silver. Because this is going to be a long and drawn out process to normalize inflationary pressures. If we look back in history, there's never been a time when you had inflation at this level when it didn't take at least a year, a year and a half, and even two years to bring it down to acceptable levels. And I'll put acceptable levels at a target of maybe 3%. Raising the interest rate alone will not lower inflation to any great extent. And so when we look at items such as gold, we have to then now go back to our technical levels to see where we need to see support hold. Right now, I'm looking at the 50-day moving average. That is sitting at 1807. The low today was 1811. As long as gold prices remain above the 50-day moving average, I think we are still going to witness higher pricing. We know that this rally will contain peaks and valleys, so to attempt to gain maximum performance out of our current trade, that's what we want to look at, which is signs of the market moving back into a retracement scenario and looking to get out when that happens or before that happens and then re-entering on the dip. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We will talk to you tomorrow for the weekly wrap-up and review. Bye-bye.